even as President Biden was calling the new president-elect. The newspapers in Brazil today carried a statement from Trump advisor Steve Bannon saying there's no possibility that the election result is correct, that Bolsonaro should start a, a months-long ballot-by-ballot audit of the results, and that whatever he does, he definitely shouldn't leave office. He should stay in office despite the election results. In a live stream last night responding to the election results in Brazil, Steve Bannon said it more bluntly. He said Bolsonaro, quote, can't concede. Can't concede. Why not? Why can't he concede? And why do you care, Steve Bannon? I mean, this is the part that's about us. That's about us and our country and our election next week. Because why do you think it is that this top White House advisor to former President Donald Trump, why do you think it is that he's telling this guy in Brazil, this Trump-like, far-right, buffoonish, unpopular Brazilian president who's just been voted out of office, why is Steve Bannon telling him that he shouldn't admit to the election results? He shouldn't admit that he's been voted out. He cannot concede. Why do you think Bannon is doing that? Do you think that Steve Bannon has some substantive, fact-based beliefs about the integrity of Brazil's elections? Do you think he has some facts that he knows that have made him concerned about how votes are counted in Sao Paulo? Really? Think he has important information about something being wrong with a voting machine in Santa Catarina or some other place in Brazil he's never been to that I'm probably mispronouncing? I mean, why do you think Steve, Steve Bannon cares? Why did Trump endorse Bolsonaro and endorse his voter fraud claims even in advance of the election? Why is it that we can be absolutely 100 percent sure that if Trump were still president instead of Joe Biden, the U.S. government itself would be refusing to acknowledge that Bolsonaro just lost this election? Why? Why do they do this? It is not about Brazil. It is about us. It is about propagating and inculcating into us, or at least inculcating into their supporters, this assertion, this belief, this conviction that elections are bad, that elections are suspect, that elections are for suckers. And anybody who's not a sucker shouldn't believe any election result anywhere. Elections suck. They're a hoax. They're a racket. We shouldn't use them. We know better. And this line of attack, it isn't about any one election. It's not about any particular allegation of something being wrong with some particular election. It's about elections as elections. It's about elections as a category. And you can see it at work in all these different instances, right? That's how you can see it sort of, there's no exceptions here, it's a rule. You can see it at work with Trump and his remoras, like Steve Bannon, insisting that Trumpy guys all around the world shouldn't have to abide by election results. You can see it at home, coming into sharper focus now, now that we're eight days out from the next national election. Trump issuing a new endorsement of the Republican candidate who's running against Senator Maggie Hassan in New Hampshire in this election. Trump endorses him now by saying outright that what he likes about the guy is that he is, quote, a strong and proud election denier. So they're embracing that term now. You must be a strong and proud election denier. Those are Trump's words in order to get his endorsement as the de facto leader of the Republican Party. Right? You also see it in that odd footage that's being aired by Fox News over the past few days of Trump calling the Republican Senate candidate in Arizona, this guy Blake Masters, the one who's running against Democratic Senator Mark Kelly. Trump tells him on the call that, hey, Blake Masters, you're doing great, but you need to go harder and louder and more insistent on the issue of election denial. You need to be more out there volunteering all the time, saying that elections shouldn't count. And Blake Masters says, oh, yes, I'll do that. I'll go hard on that issue. Why does Trump need that? Why does Trump need that from this Senate candidate in Arizona or the Senate candidate in Nevada? They're not going to be voting on anything related to the 2020 election where Trump lost. Why does Trump want to do this? Why does he want all Republican candidates at every level to insist that elections are for suckers and that election results don't count? The reason he wants to do this is so... This idea that elections shouldn't be the way we do things anymore becomes the rallying cry and the operating principle of the Republican Party. And it's working. 
within the Republican Party. I mean, ever since Trump won the Republican nomination for president in 2016, thanks to a Republican primary system he said was rigged and fraudulent, and then he won the general election that year and still said there was fraud in that election, there were millions of illegal votes cast in that election. I mean, even in elections that he wins, he says there was fraud, right? Right through to the 2020 campaign, where even before the election, he claimed that election was fraudulent and that it shouldn't count. Why would you try to undermine faith in an election that you won? Why would you try to undermine faith in elections in other countries that most Americans can't spell? Why would you try to get everybody in your party to say that election results don't count, even when they're not in a position to reverse some sort of election result to put you back in power? It's so that the idea that elections don't count becomes the operating principle of the Republican Party. Say elections are messed up. Insist that you have proof of some kind that you can't show right now, but you have it. Proof that the elections are messed up. On the basis of your false claims that the elections are messed up, then set about actually messing up elections <laughs> to prove your point. That's the phrase that we're in now, right? There's 67 counties in Pennsylvania. In 50 of those 67 counties, the elections chiefs have left office since the last election because of threats and intimidation. 50 out of the 67 counties in the state. How smoothly do you think elections are going to go in that state this year? In Nevada, there's 17 counties. Election supervisors in 10 of the 17 counties in the state have left already or announced they are leaving. Again, ahead of threats and intimidation from the political right. You may have seen the news over the weekend about this Republican-controlled county in Nevada that is breaking its election system so profoundly. They are swearing in dozens of citizens to be citizen hand counters of their ballots. And that's the only way they want to count. This is a system they are newly inventing that last week took 60 people one full day to count 900 votes poorly. 60 people counting a full day's work, less than a thousand votes counted. Here's the Associated Press, quote, two groups of five counters that the AP observed spent about three hours each counting 50 ballots. Mismatched tallies led to recounts and occasionally to more recounts. Several of the counters noted how arduous the process was, with one volunteer lamenting, I can't believe it's two hours to get through 25 votes. Yeah. If this is how you're going to count them, this is a county with 33,000 registered votes. Took 60 people a full day to get through less than 1,000 votes. They've got 33,000 registered voters in that county. They're getting rid of the election system there, effectively. They're having randos just personally rifle through the ballots and see what they might come up with. To get through 33,000 votes on actual election day, where there's a tight Senate race and other stuff that's really important on the ballot. Yeah, it might take them a few months, I don't know, maybe a year to get some kind of tally. Nobody will have much faith in it when they do. It's a system, right? Say the elections are messed up. On the basis of that, actually do mess them up. Then, when the elections are messed up, claim vindication and show everyone, hey, look, this election thing we used to do, it's just too broken to even try to use that anymore. Wow, what a mess. Why would anybody believe those results? Let's throw the results out.